Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the Art Design Workshop tutorial series. And in this episode we are going to look at how to spawn NPCs into the town view or the visit the town center view of the campaign. And last time we were scavenging the Tale World's code base for stuff that we can use in our own code. And we found this workshop character's campaign behavior which um, I didn't really go too much into detail, but this spawns uh, all the shop workers. I mean, you see here, this gets the culture shop worker object, and this will spawn the shop workers into every um, workshop. So this is something that we can use to spawn our own NPC into the workshops. And in this case, eventually I want to spawn the uh, artisan brewery or artisan brewer but right now we can just start with getting everything ready to spawn any type of npc and you can also see like how we can copy paste things from the existing code base so um from here um looks like this is the starting point so we listen to new event and the event that we will listen to is location characters are ready to spawn event and this will go into our own campaign behavior that we made in episode five a couple of episodes back so we will just add one more listener there and we will listen to location characters are ready to spawn event and it's maybe not i don't even know honestly what location characters really are I just know that they are like, uh, I mean, it's basically NPCs and uh, like location character is some sort of agent with, um, uh, agent that is tied to some specific location in the map. So we can take this location characters already spawn, and this is fine method name for us as well. So we just copy that in. And this used, unused usable points is the name of this argument. To be honest, I don't even really understand what it means. Or like, I kind of understand what it means, but not entirely. But that's not the point. The point is that we can use the code that exists to spawn shop workers, to spawn our own, own NPCs. So here, let's see what this does. It looks at, looks at the current settlement. Um, it looks at the current location is the center within the current settlement. This is all kind of, and it, and it looks at it is daytime, campaign time now is daytime. So that's not, this is all a bit technical, but this condition looks good. So let's just copy that. And let me actually um, reverse this and return. I will not, I don't want uh, too many nested if statements and I don't want this additional uh, indirection here. So we can just copy all of this. So this is the thing that actually spawns the workers. And we can take a small look at what this is actually doing. Location with ID is the same as before. So it looks at the town workshops, it checks that the workshop is um, operational. Then um, they check the user, unused user, usable point count, get the uh, tag of this workshop. So the workshop tags are um, basically numbers. So zero is the artisans, artisan workshop in this settlement. One will be the first workshop and two is the second workshop and so on. So the workshop tags are like workshop underscore two for the second non-artisan workshop, for example. So this looks at uh, this dictionary of unused usable spawning points. Uh, it checks how many unused spawning points there are and multiplies it by um, 33%. So basically, we spawn one-third of the potential amount of uh, shop workers based on the spawning points. 
So that is what this is actually doing. And of course, we don't really care about any of this stuff. So we can just remove all of this. Um, maybe we should check that there are uh, free spawning points. So we could check that this uh, unused spawn uh, unused point count is larger than zero, I guess. We don't need a while, we just want one in PC. We want our artisan brewer. And then uh, we don't care about any of this stuff. We don't care about any of this stuff. We need a character object. And eventually I want to make my own character object for the artisan brewer and PC type. But for now, um, let's just pick something. So I was thinking of like caravan master. So we can, this culture uh, has a bunch of character objects. Caravan guard for this culture. Caravan master for this culture. Is there like arena? No, there's no arena master armorer. There's a bunch of character objects for every culture. So let's just do um, Karen Master. And this is decent because there are no Karen Masters uh, usually in the map. So if we um, later we will add dialogues. So if we condition our dialogues based on that we are talking to Caravan Master, we know that we are talking to the NPC that we spawned. Whereas if we just spawned like shop worker, then we wouldn't really know that we are spawning, uh, we are talking to the NPC that we spawned, we created. So let's just do caravan, caravan master here. And let's try to um, firstly satisfy, satisfy the compiler over here by adding some more imports. And then there are a ton of different arguments for this spawning. And to be honest, I don't care about most of this stuff. The workshop tag is the place that this NPC will be uh, placed. That is, that is like the navigation target, I guess. So where the NPC will try to walk to and where it will be spawned. Um, let's format this a bit more. So where is the endpoint for this thing? Over here. Um, kind of difficult because the line is so long. I could, let's just format it like, I mean, do I like this? Not really. Just trying to figure out what sort of formatting I like. Maybe I like this. This looks fine enough to me. So, first of all, the first massive argument is this agent data. Um, so it sets new simple agent origin. Actually, I don't even need... So the agent origin is like the backstory for this character. So like, for example, the main character origin is that your parents were killed and you fled with your brother and all that stuff. Um, and the simple agent origin is just like a, a origin for a character that doesn't really matter. So for example, troops might have simple agent origin because they are like cannon fodder. They don't really matter. They don't have interesting, uh, interesting backstory. So you see that if I if I control shift space here, um, Visual Studio will show you the arguments for this method, and you actually see that the default. You see the default arguments for each position here. That is what this means. The brackets and then equals something something. These are the default arguments. So that means that all, all of this stuff, if you look at the default arguments, it's like minus one, null, and the default descriptor. So all of this stuff is actually just the default arguments. So we don't need any of that. Um, and the only thing that matters is that this, this character will be based on the caravan master 
character object or this agent or location character. So the agent and the agent is inside the location character, and inside that you have the agent origin, which actually determines what type of um, location character will be spawned. The monster is like, is this a horse or a human? Um, so <laughs> this is a human in a settlement. That looks fine. We don't want to mess with this stuff. And then there is the agent behaviors. And this character will be given just the wanderer behaviors. And I guess wanderer behavior is just NPC that might move around a bit or something like that. Doesn't really matter too much. The agent behaviors are a very complicated topic, and I won't really be going into that. And then um, there are a bunch of further arguments, such as use civilian equipment. So we want to use civilian equipment, actually. And then a bunch of other stuff that we don't probably won't care too much about. And then finally, once we have, sorry, once we actually have our location character, after all this work, we can add that location character into the scene, into the settlement scene, into the current mission, I guess. But to be honest, you don't need to understand any of this stuff. Only thing that matters is that you get the simple agent origin with the character object that you want. And to prove that, we can just run this right now, and it should just work, I think. I don't see why it wouldn't work. So we listen to location characters ready to spawn. Let me put a breakpoint here, where we enter the location characters are ready to spawn, so that we can see when that happens. And we can try a couple of things like going into a tavern, seeing if that triggers location characters are ready to spawn, and stuff like that. So now if we go to if what if we take a walk around the town center, we should hit the breakpoint. And we do. And then we can check that the um, the location with ID is the center. So the center is the town center, right? So that is exactly what we were looking at. Oh, well, actually, the campaign mission current location is also the center, and we are comparing that with the with the center we got here. So yeah, but that's right, and this condition passes, and then we go through the workshops, and we check that the workshop is running, which it is, and then we check the number of usable points um, the number of usable points is zero because this is the artisan workshop so the artisan workshop um, does not have a place where you can place NPCs so that's not true the next workshop is the workshop number one which is the carpenter and that will have 27 available spawn points. So we will just take one and put our caravan master there. Okay, so this looks to be working. So let me just run it. And instead of walking all the way to a workshop, let's just instead talk to one of these NPCs. So you can check here who owns the workshop. So this guy or this girl owns a wood workshop, so we can just visit her. And we should be placed somewhere near the wood workshop, which is here. And somewhere in here, we hope to find our caravan master. But you might have to look for him. Here you are, Batanian caravan master. And if we talk to him, he would just ask if we want to hire him. <laughs> Which is, I guess, the mercenary behavior. 
because we haven't set our own dialogues or anything yet. So this is just, this is what would happen if you meet Karen, Karen Master out in the wild. He wants to join you and we can pay him and he will actually join us. Okay, so, and we can go to the other workshops. So this guy owns the smithy. We can go to the smithy as well. And we should see that all the workshops at the moment have one of these caravan masters just chilling somewhere. And that has to be our caravan master. This guy has to be our caravan master, yes. Okay, so you can see that all the workshops have one of these guys. So actually the only thing I want to change about this is that we only want to spawn uh, them in breweries. We only want to spawn in uh, our characters in breweries because eventually they will be the artisan brewers and we want we don't want them in the other types of workshops. So we just said uh, check workshop type is uh, so the string ID is brewery and the string IDs are the IDs you see in the XML files. So for example, we called our item um, we called our beer item uh, artisan beer artisan underscore beer. So that would be the string ID for our item type and for this so this brewery is also the ID you see if you go into the workshop type XMLs. So we check that the workshop type equals brewery and we can actually set another breakpoint here maybe except that I cannot. Okay here. And now we just have to go to a uh, town which hits this condition and I can show you show you the string ideas. Well, I already know that the brewery is the correct string ID, but I can just show it to you. So let's go to Danglanus, which is a city that has a brewery. And we can go in here and visit. So now, if we look at the current workshop, workshop type, so the workshop type is brewery and the workshop or the string ID for brewery is indeed a brewery. So this is, so it's better to use the string IDs um, instead of something like name or description or, or whatever, because these would change based on your language. Whereas the string IDs are always the same. So even though the name for this workshop or the, even, even on the top level, if you look at the, look at the workshop here, you can say the name, you can see that the name for this workshop is brewery. So technically you don't even, or if you use this, you wouldn't even need to go look at the workshop type. Uh, but only the workshop type has this string ID, which is the thing that you actually want to check against. Okay, but now if I press F5, this condition will not be hit more because there is only one brewery in this city. So now we know that we spawned only one Karan Master here and we spawned him in the in the brewery where we are right now. So this is actually working just as well as I want this to work for right now. So in the next few episodes I will add the dialogues so that we can actually interact with this NPC that we spawn and then I will also add the my own type of NPC or we'll add the XMLs to make uh, actual um, artist and brewer NPC type. So then it will be a bit more thematic and we can control the equipment and stuff like that. But that is everything for this episode. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.